hello hello and welcome to another video and in this one I'm swatching out the Jazz Art Byron watercolors that I got for my birthday a whole video that I uploaded a few weeks ago so you can check that out if you're into that kind of thing uh, but today I'm swatching out the Ocean Australian Landscape and Pastel Jazz Art Byron watercolor pocket sets um, there are three other sets available You've got Primary, Nature, and Metallic. So if you have any of those sets, or if you have these ones and want to compare thoughts down below, um, you can comment away. Now each set contains 12 watercolour half pans, an aqua brush, and a sponge. And so I was pretty stoked to get these to try them out, as I do quite like the Jazz Art brands. It's a very affordable brand. Uh, and I really like their pencils. I have a set of their watercolour pencils as well as a few of their uh, regular colour pencils and I find them very enjoyable to draw with. Of course the one major limitation is that they are not your professional grade so there is no light fastness information which likely means that they're not light fast neither the pencils nor these paints and there's no pigment information in the paints whatsoever uh, so that could potentially be an issue but these are just going to be for fun for uh, in workbooks and um, nothing that would be on display let alone sold just really good to practice with as I am you know growing and learning as an artist I am pretty excited to be able to play with these and so this set in particular has really beautiful colours as you can see they have a range of those colours that you see in the ocean itself as well as a few that are in your sand, your rock formations and they lend themselves I think not just to ocean um, sceneries or ocean landscapes but I think you could use it in a lot of nature as well particularly the gloomy kind uh, so in this one you've got deep purple ultramarine Prussian blue bright blue light blue viridian dark green yellow ochre burnt sienna burnt umber blue gray and Keynes gray and they're a really really beautiful array of colors and they are, like I said, I think I could work with them, try a lot of different things, see how far I can stretch it beyond its namesake. Uh, now, there is a few overlapping ones in the Australian landscape, as you'll see coming up. But I will say the ones that overlap are your ultramarine, Prussian blue, blue-grey, dark green, and Payne's grey. So there's a f quite a few there that overlap. Um, they are good staple colours though. I'm particularly happy about the dark green and blue grey being in both because they're really beautiful colours that I can see myself using a lot of. Uh, the other thing I will say is I know that there's quite a fair stereotype about you know Australian landscape being a lots of reds and yellows. But where I'm from, Victoria, it is a primarily green landscape. So I, I know what they were going for with the name, but I feel it's very limited. Now, of course, you can mix, uh, you know, the gamboge with the ultramarine and Prussian blue to get more greens, which I know a lot of people prefer mixing their own colours. But as I said, these don't have any pigment information. So they could potentially be made up of a lot of pigments and then you get really muddy colours uh, when you mix them. As I'm going to learn more about the uh, colours and more about art, more about those sort of tips, I'm learning that the fewer pigments in a paint, uh, watercolour, is better. Um, but so that is, that is something to keep in mind. Like I said, these are mostly for fun. Um, but the colours that don't overlap in this one are, as I mentioned, gamboge, orange, deep red, purple, olive green, orange red, and raw umber. 
and I really do. The purple is extremely vibrant, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, but again, I'm not sure how that goes with the Australian landscape. It's more like a sunset collection, I would say. Uh, but, you know, that is just my opinion. I'm sure I can work with it. Uh, the other thing I have noticed just watching them out is you need a fair few bits to get a rich colour. There is not a lot of collectible pigment in your first sort of swipe, unlike the um, St. Petersburg watercolours I was working with. They are a much more professional brand. They are much more high quality paint and you can feel the difference. Like it does not need a huge amount of wetting and several layers to get the richness, richness of colour that I am a fan of. Now, I know some people really love their transparent watercolours and there are times where that is very useful, but I um, I do like rich, vibrant colours in all arrays, both your like, darks, your lights. I like them all very, very bright. Um, although, obviously, you've got to have some duller colours for the brights to stand out. So, you anyway, know, it's, it's, you know, can be a lose-lose situation if I'm not careful. Uh, but here I've got the pastel collection. And uh, this one also has a overlap, but just one. It's got the same yellow ochre as in the ocean uh, collection. But other than that, none of these colours overlap. I will say they are, it is an interesting palette being a travel palette. Where I can see the ocean palette being taken with someone on a beach holiday and the Australian landscape being taken as well. It's a lot more um, varied, so there are a lot more colours, but a lot more warmer colours. That could work for a lot of things, I think. You could take that one a lot of places. This pastel collection, I can't, I can't see the need for it being a travel set, if you understand my meaning. When you have a travel set, it's mostly for people who want to do plein air painting, right? So having a travel set that doesn't lend itself, I would say the best to plein air. Um, it's, it's a very interesting set. I can't see myself taking this one traveling, though I adore these colors and I have ideas for drawing sort of like a series of like cutesy style paintings, like getting into more figures and um, detailed work. Um, and trying it out with this, as there are some really beautiful colours. Um, if you saw my whole video, you'll know I got a bunch of pastel acrylic paints as well. So clearly I like that kind of thing. Uh, but in this set, you've got macaroon yellow, the aforementioned yellow ochre, pastel orange, and light orange, pastel pink, mauve, Light turquoise, pastel green, light ultramarine, blue, cobalt blue, and lake blue. Now, mauve I find is a funny one because that is not what I would consider a mauve color. It's far brighter. Um, you could you could have called it a light violet maybe. Um, but you know, I think I say this every time I'm swatching things. I judge color names. Like, I could do better. Um, but no, this is a very fun set, but not one I can see being travelled with greatly. Uh, so in this bit, I'm going to use each set in a little painting to do very, very quick, uh, no, no deep thought into it. I'm just switching them out, mixing them, slightly uh, seeing how they work, seeing how many layers I need to get the richness that I want. Uh, and also, this is like my first painting paintings on this paper, because this has been my swatch book up to this point. And it will remain, as these drawings are more like extended swatches rather than any sort of um, major uh, paintings. These are just getting an idea, a feel for the paint, which is something I'm going to try and do more of as I'm swatching things. I want to paint with them to feel them out. Because I think swatching alone isn't doing justice to how I feel about paints. 
Uh, so this here, I am doing a beach scene. I uh, recreated from my photos of uh, a trip to Adelaide. I can't remember which beach exactly this one was. I did this is just a photo from my camera reel, and I haven't written it down which one it was or anything like that. So don't know which beach this is, but it's very beautiful, very sunny day, lots of clouds. Trying to get that picture uh, across. Um, and trying to get the depth of the water. Now this paper is uh, Fabriano paper, but it is only 20% cotton. I brought it because it was cheap and I don't have a lot of money to throw around. Uh, and it does really well at catching the richness of swatching. Um, but for actual paint, it doesn't, for actual paint, for actually painting a picture, it doesn't hold up the best as it does start to peel before long. Now, I will say that it does hold a lot of water. There's no rippling, but the paper does peel after a few layers. And as I said, with this paint in particular, it is quite, uh, I need a lot of layers to get the vibrancy that I want. Now, the other thing I found, I, I haven't used sponges like this a lot, so I don't know if it's typical, uh, but it was the sponge in the set was really welling up with water and not soaking in. So I was getting a puddle of water as I was drying off or trying to wipe clear uh, the um, aqua brush, and it just it it was not what I needed to dry it out with a cloth so I could have some more space to dry the brush on and allow it to pick up different colours without, you know, cross-contaminating everything. Uh, so I found that quite strange. Like I said, I wouldn't use sponges like this before. I don't know if that's standard or if perhaps these are a little cheap and not doing what travel set sponges are supposed to do. Um, but... I can't say I'm a fan. I would probably have to take that out and replace it with the cloth or something that is actually absorbent, um, which is a bit annoying. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, but moving on, this next painting is a sunset. This is from Flickr. Um, I don't have any pictures of a sunset, which surprised me to no end. I was <laughs> very surprised. Um, but as you can still see above there, uh, the mixing starts to get a little muddy in the ocean and the sand. That brown thing is like a abstract pier. Uh, there was a pier in the photo, or not a pier, uh, steps down to the beach. Um, and it's this, this is like quick paintings, and I'm not the best at that at the moment. It looks a little weird, um, but you can see... I do like to do a lot of mixing on the paper because I like that real free, flowy, wishy-washy effect. Um, but it has started to get quite muddy in sections. Um, I cut. Oh, I actually lost a bit of the information because my uh, camera died and I didn't realise. So you'll get to see the above picture finished a bit better in a minute. Uh, this last one, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to draw. Mum gave me the idea of a flower meadow. Um, so that's what I've done. It's just from idea more than anything else. Um, there's no reference picture. It is not the best. I just wanted to play with the colours, uh, see what I could get. But it's actually given me a sort of desire to do this kind of painting a lot better. And perhaps even play with some masking fluid so I can get the grass down but keep space for the flowers. Um, whereas I tried to put the flowers down and paint around it because I knew painting over the top would get a bit muddy on the green grass. Um, but leaving it, um, it's quite difficult to paint around. 
Um, probably if I had smaller brushes and I wasn't relying on an aqua brush, which I do have other brushes, but I was just being very lazy. Um, but yeah, it doesn't lend itself to the easiest sort of painting. But if I had some masking fluid, which is something that I played with years ago, uh, it might be it might be good. It might be handy to do a sort of um, wildflower meadow like this. So that is something that I'm going to try. And if you have any tips and tricks, and obviously using a reference photo as a guide is the first step. But I really just wanted to play with all the colours. And this set in particular has me a little stumped on what I'm going to do with it. I'm very excited. But at the moment, I was just sort of like, I want to do these scenery paintings. But what am I going to do with this last set? And this sort of... Uh, flowy dreamy hazy um painting for this pastel set it's the best i can come up with in a short period of time um but um it's a lot of fun and i really like these colors they're such cute colors can't wait to play around with them i like all the colors in all the sets i don't think there's a color i dislike um, I was trying to add depth by adding some of the yellow ochre into the grass and stop making the green look so candified. Don't know if it worked. Oh, and as you can see, I've had the same problem with every sponge. of just that water welling up on top and it becoming almost unusable for its purpose, which is very annoying. Um, like I said, the mixing, the paints get a little muddy. Um... And it's, they're, they're not like pathetically cheap quality watercolour paint. But compared to your higher end brands, you can tell that they are a basic nature. They're basic nature. But I am still very excited to have these. I love the colour ranges. I love the, I love the compactness of the sets. I love the idea of like limiting myself to these colours. I know they're not limited colour palette in the way of people that do paintings with just three colours um, and have a whole range of pictures because they're really good at mixing. But I still really enjoy working with these. I know um, that the several layer thing will irritate me um, and the sponge is already getting to me um very 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 annoying but i would if you are not haven't got you know great quality watercolor paints these are definitely something you could try give them to a young person you know that wants to get into art um yeah i think they're they're very good they're very inexpensive um and they are they are a lot of fun. As you can see, you can get some real vibrancy if you're willing to layer it over and over again, sticking with very similar colours in the area so it doesn't get muddy. Uh, it can work out really well. Um, so yeah, I, I have mostly praise for these paints. For what they are, for what they're worth, I, I do recommend them. I am very grateful to have received them. And I think my little swatch paintings have come out pretty well. I have been in such, such terrible headspace lately. Um, my, I, did you know it was possible to be officially diagnosed with burnout? Because uh, that's what my doctor told me the other day. Um, so I'm trying to take some time for myself and do some more art. Um, but with less pressure on myself to do things perfectly, um, setting more achievable goals and just being more present in the moment. Um, and I think that these sets will help with that. They are not the kind of sets that you're going to do heavily detailed paintings with. Uh, they're just there to relax with, uh, to use in my art journals. And to just take a step back and to breathe and to appreciate all the little things in life. Um, so yeah, pretty pleased with these. I hope you enjoyed 
Uh, if you've got these paints yourself or you have any thoughts on them or, um, you know, paints that are similar but maybe a little bit more pigmented so I don't know if I put down quite as many layers, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you're going through anything at the moment, uh, reach out, let me know. I am here to speak to everyone. Um, but yeah, that's all for this time.